Welcome back, guys. It's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto Update. Today, major moves incoming for altcoins and in particular, Ethereum. It's been some time since we've really seen Ethereum kick off or at least make it into these new all-time highs. But we've got quite a lot of charts to get through today, especially on ETH and the total market caps followed by Cardano as well. To give us a bit of an idea of why we might be expecting this major move to be incoming. Now also look at timeframes for the moves as well to give us a bit of a roadmap. And of course, a critical junction for Bitcoin on the dominance, which has been something that I looked at quite a lot to give us an idea of uh, the season that we're in, Bitcoin or alts. So without further ado, make sure you've hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, click all so you can see the videos pop up in your news feeds and notifications on your mobiles. If you're not seeing them, check your settings. First up, have a look at Patreon. That's what we're checking out here. This is the Investor Accelerator. If you guys are looking to learn a little more about trading, we've got exclusive content here, uh, digital downloads, all of the posts that we have covered since the beginning of the Investor Accelerator Patreon are there and uh, weekly market videos and monthly market reports which have just come out as well. So this is 39 US, 70 spots left. Thanks for everyone that is new and has been taking up the offer. We'll catch you guys on Monday in the group there. So the links for this are down below. Onto the market caps, 2.2 trillion for Bitcoin, ETH and the rest of the cryptos. Uh, ETH, as we can see, for the seven day periods up about 20%. So it's the major mover at the moment. And of course, Solana's up there too, getting close to that $150 level. Probably might even be there by the time this video comes out. It's moving so quick. Uh, Polkadot's finally having its time in the in the light, its spotlight movement. But again, the idea is that we want to get onto the strong horses and we've covered that many times why uh, Sol and Ada were the strong horses and of course, Ethereum as well. Looking particularly or primarily at the charts. So the first one is Ethereum. I just want to know where are the resistance points, the major ones, and then of course just the time frame. So I'm going to keep it nice and simple today. The previous all-time high, 1400. What happened in January? We hit resistance, we got a massive double top, but the market was so strong, it didn't even do anything. There was barely a reaction from this old all-time high, uh, from the market hitting the old all-time high. It broke through and then came back and tested that top. And so the, the measurements I want to have a look at here are, this is the breakout, how many weeks until the top? It was about 14 weeks there. And what happened last time? Last time we had a previous top and it tried to break again, but this to me looks like the breakout bar. And then how long until we got another top? Seven weeks. So I'm on a weekly chart. Interesting that, that the last movement was about seven weeks into the final top. And what have we seen now out of the, the breakout? We saw 14 weeks. So half of the time it took to get to that previous all-time high. I'm so interested in the halfway points, the 50% points, because they work so well when it comes to price, they also work in time. So if I'm measuring complete move, uh, complete ranges in price, I'll do the same thing in time. So that's gonna be my roadmap as we break through Ethereum. So that's just to give me an idea here. Now this doesn't really show us too much. We are moving up, we can see that ETH this week is up 22%. It's getting very close to the all-time high. We've hit $4,000. The other couple of charts here are the interesting ones. So we got ETH Bitcoin. You can see the resistance that we have come up against at around 8%. And the market has done that twice now. The first time it was, well, it's hit it here and just sliced straight through. Played around in August. And then as the market was coming down in 2018, it played around at the 8% level again, but got heavily rejected. So we've gone through quite a long consolidation, accumulation of Ethereum against Bitcoin. So looking at this as a major breakout. Just a month or two and a half months ago, three months ago, we hit that 8% level again, but we did not get rejected too far. And it looks like we are coming back to test 8% once again. So if we get through the 8% at this point, then our next levels are sitting at around 10, 12, and then 15%. To me, this looks like we're probably going to at least attempt 
the 10%. So this then draws a lot more money into ETH rather than Bitcoin. So this is going to be a huge dominance play for Ethereum. Looking at the dominance, we are getting rejected at the moment ever so slightly at 20% dominance. So this is the entire market capitalization, what we looked at first, the 2.27 trillion market cap. And Ethereum's place in that is 20% of that market cap. So it tested it once in May. So that is now four months ago, May, June, July, August. Yep, I got my, my numbers right. Uh, four months ago, we tested it again in June. We tested it again in August. And now we're in September. We are testing it for the fourth time. I think this is going to break through here. So this is going to be the big play for Ethereum taking a lot of that market share. So a lot more money is going to come into um, ETH rather than Bitcoin at this stage. The other thing to note is this chart right here. This was something that I was watching heavily to make sure I wasn't buying a lot of altcoins while they were still falling against their Bitcoin value and purchasing some Bitcoin. Of course, the strong horses we've looked at were Ethereum, Sol, ADA, um, those things have been good, especially from months back at those lows. But the main thing I want to look at here is the strength from Ethereum dominance. You can see this. This is a cup and handle pattern here. Uh, but we've also got an inver inverted head and shoulders to a degree, not as much. But main thing, just to keep it simple, resistance, resistance, resistance. Eventually, it looks like we're going to break through. Flip that on its head. Check out Bitcoin. Bitcoin support, support, potentially going to test this as support again, but this bounce was so weak that I suspect it's going to come straight through that level and a lot of that is going to flow into ETH as we can see this is on an uptrend and possibly also ADA. You can see ADA's dominance is coming up to its previous all-time high as well. So that's why I'm looking at this as a major move in particular for the major strong altcoins. I think the other altcoins are probably going to pop. I, there, there's 10,000 of them there now, so I'm not going to go through all of them or have any of my other picks. You'd see that from the channel. The main ones I've looked at is Solana and also FTX. There's plenty of other good ones out there, which I didn't get on. Luna has done very well, for example. It's important to understand the weakness in cryptos and stocks and the strength in others. And we've talked about that many times about being on board with the 50% level and driving above that 50% level. So ADA is something I'm going to be looking at, especially as it gets closer to this all-time high. How is it going to react? Is this going to be a time that it falls back and just takes some more time to recover? Or is it going to slice through the 5% dominance? So that's going to really uh, affect the Bitcoin dominance now as well because there is so much more money in ADA. But the, the exciting thing with ADA is that it climbs nice and gradually. I know everyone wants everything to go to the moon and just shoot up like this. But when that happens, it's usually weak hands and the smart money dumps on the weak hands and then the weak hands keep holding. They get scared, they get excited here and then they get scared and they just die out, just start selling everything that they can because they think this is going to zero. But when we get these nice sustained moves, that's, that's a bit too quick, but it's come back and had some time again, come back and had some time and we'll probably have some time again eventually. That makes up for a really healthy move. And that's why I'm uh, excited for ADA. And we can see that on the Bitcoin chart as well. So this was the dominance. This is ADA versus Bitcoin. And it's doing the same thing here. It's quite similar because of course, Bitcoin has been making up most of the, uh, the crypto market caps. But the, the thing here again, is that it hits its uh, levels, sorry, it's 50% right here, tries to break through, hits 50%, comes back, sits on old all-time highs, breaks through. It's a very clean pattern and it's working a treat. It's really going through the, the motions of building up support and solid support. Now, this could last for this cycle or many more cycles um, or it could just be this cycle and start to crash back down. But the view is there's more in this cycle. And so I like this nice sustained uptrend rather than it just shooting to the moon and then coming back down and uh, not having too much fun for many years. So we've looked at Ethereum, we've looked at Bitcoin, we've looked at ADA, why we're looking at major moves coming to the market. Now I want to look at the total market cap and I'm going to do the same thing as a, that, I, that I've done with ETH. 
where you can see a previous all-time high, the breakout of the all-time high, how many weeks until we got to the next all-time high is about 19 weeks. So that's about five months. Let's look at total market cap three. So this is all of the market cap. So all of the altcoins except Bitcoin and Ethereum. So this is all of the money everywhere else. Okay, so old all-time high. We got the breakout. I'm going to measure it from two places. So this is the, the bar that I think confirms the breakout because it actually closed above it. And then the all-time high is at about 12 bars later. So just short of three months or on three months. And the next bar after the reset, and this has started to break out again right here, gives us nine bars. So you can see the the price or the, the time frames that we've looked at for, for ETH, for um, the total market cap one and total market cap three, somewhere around that seven to 19 weeks. I'd probably call it a little bit less than that at this point as well, especially after already breaking through the old all-time high. Somewhere in that seven to 14 weeks is the, the frame that I'm looking at once we establish a new position above the old all-time high. If we break out of the old, if we break out of the all-time highs, then come back under. I want to start to see whether we can get above it, hold before we take off again. That's the point that I'll be measuring from, and then that gives me a time frame of how far uh, I plan to be holding the positions, and then where I'll be looking to start to exit the market, rather than just saying. In October is when the market's going to end. In December, the market's going to end. That's not how the market works. The market will show you what timeframes it wants to give you. That's how it works. So keep an idea of the timeframes that you want to measure. Look back at history. Use them moving forward. Like with prices, we're using 50%. That's going to give us an idea of how not to FOMO into the market at the very end, especially if you're starting to count okay, we've been in this space, we've been going up for this amount of time, seven, eight weeks, nine weeks, 10 weeks, 11 weeks, things might be getting a little bit old and that can prevent you from losing a lot of money at the top, especially at the end when the market gets extremely excited. As you might remember from May, if you were in the market. So at the moment, a lot is pointing to major moves in ETH, ADA, altcoins, uh, Bitcoin can still have a move, but it looks like more money is going to flow into the majors because I think Bitcoin is going to break down from that level. It doesn't mean it has to happen when I publish this video or in the next hour or the next day or the next week. Check out Ethereum uh, just before it broke out of its all-time high again. It made it very close to the top before retreating for a couple of weeks. Really solid correction. Doesn't look like much on the chart, but if you were buying in this last week of the high, which could be this week, we've just taken off, right? Then you have to endure quite a hefty decline. So from that top, which just fell short of the previous all-time high, looks kind of similar to what ETH looks like now, right? The fall came back to about 50%. So it looks like another beautiful entry time and it was very quickly out of that move before we took off again. So we had, uh, well, it was, it was quickly out of that, that pricing, but it still took several more weeks, but you weren't going to get that pricing back. And then eventually it broke out of the previous all-time high and it was off to the races for only a few more weeks after that point. And so I just want to make the, the point that it doesn't necessarily have to be this week or next week. We could see this. This would be an absolutely amazing buying opportunity. But I think a lot of people are also watching this, hoping, expecting something like that. I definitely would love to see that to get better buying opportunities. But if we break that top, then of course, we just want to see the market at least sit on it or just take off and sit a bit higher to get the strong bullish move uh, that we want to see moving forward. So like with everything, there is risk and reward. Do you buy in now with the potential for the market to crash on you, uh, but you think maybe it's just going to go up and we'll never see lower prices? Or do you wait for the breakout and just forego some of the profits in that zone and just buy as the market breaks to that new pricing level? That's the thing you have to put up in your plan and decide whether that's something you want to do now. Basically, make sure you have that written down somewhere computer paper before you get into the market because if you remember from April and May, things can get very crazy very quickly and everything is forgotten at that point. It's just about moons and making money 
and eventually this happens and all of those dreams come undone and everyone ends up back at McDonald's. So that's it for today's video. I'm excited for this. I am waiting patiently for the next signals uh, as we've already seen Solana go crazy, ADA go crazy. Ethereum is now moving quite well. FTX has done extremely well. So now it's a waiting game. What happens next? We don't always have to be buying something every single day. Patreon special still going on. See you guys on Monday over at Patreon or on my Twitter or Instagram for daily crypto updates. Check us out over there and I will catch you at the next video. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe, bell notification icon if you found some value from the channel. You can stake your ADA with the Investor Accelerator pool. Links are down below. Learn how to do that straightforward. Catch you at the next one. Until then, have more fun to get more done.